Welcome to the Riverside Training Facility. I'm Lieutenant Sonny Bonds. I'll be observing your practice run from the catwalks and giving you a few pointers about our procedures. I'm sure you've heard all of this before, but it never hurts to practice one more time. As you know, training is what gives SWAT the edge in the field. Take advantage of this facility to test out your weapons and meet your new team. When you're ready to start, just go through the door to the right of the chalkboard. This is the firing range. Firearm proficiency is a top priority for any SWAT officer. But never forget that SWAT is a life-saving organization. You are only authorized to fire in defense of life. Step up to the station on the far left and take a few shots at the targets. You should practice aiming for the center of mass. Hitting a suspect in the chest has the best chance of stopping him cold. A good thing to practice is the so-called failure drill. That's when you take two shots at the body and then one at the head. When you're finished with that, step up to the center station. Your pistol is your backup weapon, usually used when you're in a bind or don't have time to reload. At this range, pistols and shotguns become less accurate and it's often best to use a submachine gun or an assault rifle. Equip your primary weapon and take some shots at this mid-range target. Submachine guns and rifles have multiple firing modes, ranging from single shot to full automatic. The M4 fires in semi and full auto modes, while the submachine gun has semi-auto and a three-round When you're done, move down to the long range station. At long range, accuracy becomes imperative. Your ability to control your weapon with skill and discipline will save your life and the lives of the people around you. If you set the M4 on full auto, you will quickly lose control of it due to recoil. Give it a try now. Set your M4 to full auto and try to fire several short controlled bursts. Finished on the range, move through the door on the right. Not bad. Remember, you're most accurate when you have a strong and stable firing position. When you try to move and shoot, your accuracy is going to suffer. The faster you move, the worse your aim will be. Your accuracy will be highest when you're standing still and crouching. This portion of the range is for firing at multiple targets behind cover. Try moving and firing at them to get a sense of just how movements affect your accuracy. When you must move and fire, keep in mind that moving smoothly at a constant speed will give you better control over your weapon. Remember, smooth is fast, smooth is accurate. When you go through the door to the right. Welcome to the grenade range. Practice throwing your non-lethal grenades for a while. You can test your accuracy by throwing them through the windows on the structure. You can also test their effectiveness by throwing them at Cadet Wilson. Wilson has volunteered to experience precisely how non-lethals affect suspects in the field. You ready, Cadet? Uh, I guess so. Cheer up, kid. We all had to do this once. It'll only sting for a few hours. orient people with a very loud bang and an extremely bright flash. If you don't look away from the detonation, you can get blinded too. CS gas causes people's eyes to water and affects their breathing. Makes it difficult for them to do anything other than cough for a short period of time. Where is it? Help their targets with rubber balls that stun and disorient Great, let's continue. Go ahead and try this door. Uh-huh, I locked it before you got here. We have multiple tools for handling a locked door. The first is picking it. Good when you want your entry to an area to be quiet. Pull out your toolkit and use it to pick the lock.
Nice work. Move on to the next door. We'll use a breaching charge on this one. Much louder, but more fun. Okay, we're going all out on this one. Pull out your C2 charge, and let's blow this thing open. C2 is great for opening doors quickly and surprising the perps on the other side. This is a two-step process. First, set the charge above the doorknob. Now stand back and blow it. Nice. I never get tired of that. You do need to be careful with these. They are explosives. Anyone directly on the Guess other side of the door the is going guns. to get seriously injured. We are a life-saving organization. We don't want to kill people. Sometimes the knuckleheads give you no choice. But our goal is to have a peaceful resolution of the situation. The best solution is one in which you don't have to fire your weapon. So the first thing you need to do when you see anyone is to get them on the ground. Yell as loud as you can to get them to comply. Police! Get down now! Just get me out Officer of here. Officer Hansen here was smart enough to give up for you. But the perps, and sometimes even the victims, don't give up that easily. You are authorized to take down anyone who's aiming a weapon at you or another person. But remember, you should fire your weapon only in defense of life. If a subject hasn't given up, but isn't threatening anyone, use your other options. You can hit them with the less lethal shotgun, zap them with the taser, pepper spray them, or use one of your grenades. That will give even the biggest knucklehead second thoughts about resisting. Now that Hansen has given up, you need to restrain him. At an incident scene, you will need to restrain everyone you find, since you can never be 100% sure who's a victim and who's a perp. What do you know about the new lead anyway, huh? He's a transfer from L.A. Supposed to be top-notch. L.A.? Entry team to talk. Civilian ready to evacuate. I mean, they get multiple call-ups every Copy. week. Trailers standing by. That's why they're the best. Guess we'll be in good hands then. You won't be in anybody's hands if you don't pipe down. If you're going to lead a tactical element, you'd better start working with them. The team is in the room to the right. Order them to fall in. Let's see how you work together. Gold. Fall in on me. Nice Got to it. meet you, Tim. I don't think I quite heard you, Fields. What did you say? Nothing, sir. With you. Fields here has a big mouth. But you'll be glad he's around when you're knee-high in brass. Okay, let's see if you guys can clear a room. Order the team to clear the room behind me. Get through there. Go. On it, sir. Move it! Go, go, go! Clear so far. Trailers! Nice! Good one, LT. Area oh, clear. clear! Don't make me come down there, Fields. It's clear! I shut the lights off on them. Follow Reynolds, them in. I'm clear. And use the flashlight mounted on your firearm to navigate to the next door. Beware of doorways. Most SWAT fatalities occur when the team is ambushed as they come through the door. Deploying a grenade into the doorway will buy your team time to clear the threshold. Go ahead and do an open bang and clear on that door. Open and bang. Go. Check. On it. Go! 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 Time to move! So far, so good. Moving forward, Dry trailers! Clear. Behind it these clear. doors clear. is an open doorway. It's often best to scout out a room from a safe distance. Back in the day, we used a mirror on a stick. Simple, but effective. Nowadays, there's a high-tech gadget for everything. For corners and open doors, we have the OptiWand. The OptiWand's a tiny camera at the end of a telescoping tube. You can even use it to peer under a closed door to scope out a room before you enter it. Use the OptiWand on this doorway to scout out what's ahead. You should be able to stand on your side of the door and stick the wand through the doorway without entering the room. When you've finished with the wand, tell the element to clear the room. Move and clear. Copy. On it. Move over, boss. Move it! Go, go, go! Clear so far. Jackson. Trailers! It's clear! Reynolds. It's clear! Clear! I'm clear. 
When the team discovers a hallway while clearing, they will enter it and wait for you. This prevents the team from becoming overextended. Have them fall in, and then move up to the intersection. What the hell Behind is me. For? In position. You now have two possible directions of travel. Sometimes it's best to split up your element to perform different tasks. Command the blue team to stack up on the door at the end of the hallway. That way, they can cover your back while you and the red team move to the door on the left. Blue team. Stack it up. Copy. On it. Good. Red team. Now We're tell the red team to fall in and move down to the other door. Red. Fall Where's in and line? stay close. I'll take point. Got your back, boss. Okay. You can keep tabs on your officers when you're separated from them by observing their movements through the helmet cameras. Check out what Blue is seeing right now. When you're ready, move into the next room, and then we'll start getting fancy. Since you can essentially see through their eyes, it's not hard to command them from a distance. Tell the Blue team to move in clear through the door they're covering. Blue, open and clear. Get her open and clear it. Move it. Go, go, go. Clear so far. Moving forward. In, In position. position. Clear. clear. Great. Let's continue. Head out of this room and stop about halfway up the stairs in the hallway. Gold, behind me. Understood. Following. Hold up there. One of the most valuable members of your team is the sniper. During the course of In a position. mission, they will provide valuable intel and can even take out a bad guy without the team ever getting in harm's way. Sierra One is across the warehouse in the little room above the firing range. Sierra One, whenever you're ready. Sierra One to entry team, I have an unknown. The snipers will tell you when they see anything of interest. You can switch to the sniper's point of view, just like you can with your teammates. Check it out. When you're finished, continue up and go into the room with the target dummy. Wait, donuts! Nobody told me there'd be donuts. Well, that's How it. How can for you the eat that trash, man? That crap will slow you down in the field. But you'll At be able to handle more to his diet than just meat. Don't knock it to.